Hi, my name is Dan Graverson. I'm the creator of PI Migration. And in this video, I'll give some more detailed information about how the PI Migration tool really works. Uh, in a way that should be easier to explain than just how the technical screenshot works, but give you a better overview of how this may be able to be used in your architecture. So the, the first thing is, is the way this is set up. And let me explain, we have a PI system up here. We have the PI migration, which is a part of the, the PI system, but I just wanted to, to separate them. So it was a bit easier to understand. And then we have a business connector. That was because that was what I was using. It could be all system that you want to, to test. And actually could also be moving towards this other system instead of having to use PI. But uh, let us just show you how this, uh, this works. So let's say this is our EDI file that we want to have uh, created or converted to an IDOC. So we'll send this into the PI system. Here we'll perform a mapping from the EDFAX message to an IDOC. Uh, XML and there's then two options either we can put it in the operation mapping to save the files down to here or we can do it in the adapter framework uh, module that will save the file down to here so that will give us uh, one file that we want to have uh, to compare us with the other thing we do is, at the same time I'm using the file adapter for this, I'm also copying it down to, to here, so the business connector can process it, and the business connector process the, that's the same way. And because this is on a separate system and a separate landscape, the only way we could send this information to the, uh, the migration tool is using an HTTP connection. So this has an HTTP connection that will save the file up to here. And then we have the rep front end where we can see the migration and compare these two files. Do they look alike or not? So that was the, the basis of how this comparison works. There's an other feature around that that is really interesting, especially if you're coming from uh, edfact messages and processing them through CBurger, because edfact messages as when you get them in, they will be split by Seaburger, and you'll have five messages that you're going to be processing instead of just one message. So that means you cannot just, for me to these, save the file because then you'll only have one file that's going to be saved. So what this message mapping can do is it can say, okay, this is a message split, so I know that I have to, to append some numbers on it. So it knows, okay, this is message one of five, this is message two of five, and three of five, and five of five. That means then the migration tool will say, okay, I can see this is, I know this is a file that has to be migrated. And then it can, can concatenate those information and make sure, oh, this is the way uh, this works on and, and say, okay, we got have to append all the different IDOC elements together to one and then compare this uh, concatenated file with the business connector file. So that's uh, the way that would work. Um, it also works the other way around if you're sending messages out from, from SAP and saving it down here and business connector. Uh, could also save it to this uh, system. We support uh, XML, IDOC XML, and EDFact messages, uh, EDI text, plain text messages, where it can do the comparison and make sure, okay, these two files do look alike and, and what are the, the changes between those. So I do hope that this makes it a bit more clear on how you can use this in your landscape. So I'm really looking forward to, to hear 
how you're using. Also check out the screencast that shows how this uh, is set up and what to see in, in here, what to do in the mapping and not as much about down here because obviously you are someone else in your organization is the expert of this third party system and I don't know what you'd be using there. So thanks for watching and goodbye.